Would you prefer to be on a cruise ship or a battleship? Now, the answer might sound easier to you, but when we get into it today, you might not be so sure. I'm Matt Anderson, and this is Worship Anywhere. Great to be back, you filming in our studio here in my kitchen rather than at the park, which we did all summer. So it's kind of nice to speak directly to you, our audience. Welcome, whether you're watching in Bismarck, Band in Lincoln, whether you're watching in Washburn, or around the state or region, or even outside of the US. We're glad that you are part of our extended family. Follow the prompts on the bottom of the screen to get involved or take a step forward. Don't just watch, take steps. Because every time we ex experience God's presence and hear his word, it's meant to have an effect on us, okay? So, so let today's experience have an effect on you and, and follow the text prompts to get involved. If you're gonna be in the Bismarck area on September 11th, we're doing a Bring a Friend Sunday. So if you're traveling through or you wanna pop in for a day from out of town or if you're here, don't just come, bring somebody because we cannot wait to help other people experience God with us at Surprise. We'll be starting a new series that day called Why We Sing. It's, it's an examination, really, of what the heck we do when we get together to sing songs in worship. What's that all about? Seems kind of weird, right? Well, check out this preview video to learn a little bit more. So we're looking forward to a really exciting fall at Surprise. If you're at a distance, that content's gonna be available to you online and on TV, so make sure that you uh, look forward to that. If you are wanting to be a part of our team, it takes a lot of people to create uh, material like this, to make worship happen, to have groups both locally in our community groups and regionally in our campfire groups. And so we'd love your help. If you'd like to be a part of our team, whether that's an in-person function or something that you can do virtually, text uh, us by following on this website here. So go to surprisechurch.com slash serve. You can take a, a little serve survey and reach out to us and let us know how you'd like to be a part of our team. We want to get you involved. Here's the deal, though. The reason we even talk about stuff like this, you don't go to the doctor's office and get asked to do anything. You don't, you don't go to a, a store and get asked to do anything. Like, here, put an apron on and start serving. The church is different. At Surprise Church, we both accept people and we challenge people. And we're proud of that. We make no apologies for that. Um, because in reality, some people expect church to be like a cruise ship. If you look at this picture right now, I just love this one. I love the roller coaster that goes outside of the, the top deck of the ship. Gee, not a lot of margin for error there. It doesn't look terribly safe. I'm not sure I'd do that or let my kids do it. But in general, cruise ships are supposed to be very safe and very fun and very pleasurable. I've been on a cruise ship. I love cruise ships. But church isn't supposed to be a cruise ship. And so people in this life sometimes go from church to church. They'll go six weeks, six months, and they just feel bored. They feel sort of shallow. They feel, oh, the music isn't doing it for me. The preaching isn't doing it for me. Or, ah, I'm just not feeling the vibe here. And they'll disappear, and they'll hang around. They'll maybe watch YouTube or online. And eventually, they just kind of dry up. People who look at churches as if they're cruise ships, what amenities are available to me those people tend to not grow. In, in fact, spiritually, I've seen people get less and less mature the more they come to a church as if it's a cruise ship because they get more and more about themselves, their own comfort and pleasure, and less and less about the thing that we are called to as the family of God, the mission that God has for us. I want to show you something in the book of Revelation because it sounds a little bit, of a, a bit like a cruise ship. This is God's plan for us. And if you just listen and, for, and, and don't realize what's going on, you might think God wants us to seek comfort and pleasure. Look at this. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. 
Then I, John, the man who's writing this letter, saw a vision, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's kind of the image that God has for the church. The, people, the believers in Christ are called God's bride. As I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle or the dwelling, the temple of God is with men, humans, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And this is a pretty sweet cruise ship. Listen to this. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There will be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Then he who has sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Whew! That is some good stuff right there, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that, that cruise ship where God makes everything good and new. This is what the end of the story looks like. God gave a man named John a, a vivid image of where God is taking the world. He is sailing us in this direction. And in this end, the end game looks like this. God makes everything new. God lives among us. God eliminates every source of suffering. And this, uh, this feels a lot more like a cruise ship than a battleship. There's no opposition, no struggle, no strain, mission accomplished. But keep reading. Verse six, and he said to me, it is done. Vision of the future now, remember. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. Oh, we, we don't have it yet. This is a future vision of a future promise. But first, he says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Clearly, we're not on the cruise ship yet, right? Clearly, this world is not without all the things on that list. Clearly, you and I are not free from tendencies that may pull us in that direction towards self-absorption, idolatry, broken lifestyles. And so what he's saying is, God is calling us to a place in which everything is the way he wants it. In the meantime, in this life, faith requires a struggle. And we are on a battleship, not a cruise ship. People who are looking for a cruise ship are going to be bored, burdened, and burned out because the cruise ship is our future, not our present. Now, fast forwarding into the future. Listen a little bit more closely to what God has planned for us. It says, because that gives us a little bit more of a, a clue about our mission today on the, on the battleship. Verse 22, the way God wants it to be is this. But I saw no temple in it. This is the city that God is preparing for us, the bride. There's no church. I saw no temple in it for the, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus, are its temple. The city had no need of sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb, Jesus, is its light. Forget street lights, Jesus is standing there. Forget churches, we are so connected to God that everywhere is church. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there. In an ancient city, you shut those gates at night. Armies and animals come at night, not good. This city will never have night, never have time of terror, and you won't need a military and you won't need gates. We're not there yet. That is our destination. And if you listen closely, our destination is there's no church, there's no sun, and there's no people you left to save because everywhere is holy, everything is holy, and everyone is holy. And as, as it gives the dimensions of the holy city, 
it, later in, in earlier in Revelation, the book, it gives the dimensions of the holy city, and it's interesting. It gives the shape of a perfect cube. I'm like, what's that about? And then you remember, back in the Old Testament, the holy of holies, the holiest place in the holy tabernacle, the holy temple, was the shape of a perfect cube. When Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, the curtain that separated that cube from the world was ripped in half because God got out. And now the dwelling of God increasingly is with us. And now we're moving from God as in one small box. Maybe back then it was their temple. Maybe today we think of it as our church box. But God's getting out and God and church is happening everywhere. We're, we call ourselves the church that leaves the building because we're pushing and dragging this world along with God to a destination in which everywhere is holy, everything is holy, and everyone is holy. In the meantime, though, here's how the world is. Every place has potential, every person can be redeemed, and every believer is called. That, makes, that means that we have to have some cruise ship conversations periodically. These are both some of the most exhilarating conversations I ever have as a pastor and the most disheartening conversations I've ever had. This week, I've had several conversations with people who simply said to me, Pastor, I, I just don't feel like I know my purpose. I, I don't know. I, I've gone to church here and there in my life. I just don't feel like it's touching me. And I'm like, that's because you're, li you're not living on a cruise ship. God wants you on his battleship serving out his mission for you. Are you ready to fulfill that mission? Absolutely. Great. Let's get you connected. Let's get you in a group. Let's get you on a ministry team. Let's get you growing in your faith. Be active. Be engaged. Don't just... Watch a YouTube video and stick your thumb in the air and say, I've got it. It doesn't work that way. That's why you're empty. And, and the people, when God has prepared someone's heart for that conversation, they lean into it and they know that this is exactly what they're calling for. But I'll be honest, not everybody is ready for this. And it's not just a, a, an America thing. I, at first I thought it was, but I, I work with a lot of pastors around the world. I need coaching and I also provide coaching to other pastors, especially pastors who are younger than I am. This last week I talked to pastors in South Africa and Brazil, and they have a lot of these disheartening conversations too. Hey, who would like to be a part of this? We're going to go do is make a difference in a local school. Who'd like to be a part of it? Oh man, I'm too busy. I got that. Yeah. Oh, who'd like to be a part of our kids' team? Who'd like to be a part of our team that that loves changing lives? Whatever your giftedness is, we'll plug in. And oftentimes they say it, it's so disheartening because people pretend that their schedule just simply won't allow them to be a part of God's mission, as if they're here for some other reason. And they're just sitting, sipping a Slurpee on a cruise ship when God calls us to be on a battleship. And the most loving thing someone could ever do at that point is to say, hey, let's talk about where we are and where we're going. We're not on the cruise ship yet. We're on a battleship. And a cruise ship conversation can be what exactly what I need when I'm starting to push towards my own plans, my own ambitions, my own comfort to get me back on track with God. Listen to the end of the Bible. These are the closing verses of the Bible. This is interesting because this is how it ends. It says, verse 17, And the Spirit and the bride, which is the church, say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. Let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. If you look at these words, it's a little confusing. Who are we saying come to? It's, it's not clear at first reading. Who are they inviting? The church is a battleship in the world. That doesn't mean we, we create violence, quite the opposite. We bring peace to the world that is violent through the weapons of God's spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. But we also bring the gospel of Jesus, which changes people's hearts. And that's an invitation. If you're on a cruise ship, you don't care about inviting anyone. You care about yourself. If you're on a battleship, on God's battleship, you're looking for people to win for Christ. Who are they doing that to here, though? Who are they saying come to? Look at this next slide. I just underlined the object of the sentence. And the spirit and the bride, the church, say come. Let him who hears say come. And let him who thirsts come. You know who they're talking to? People who are floating in the sea of life thirsty for the gospel, thirsty for the water of life that Jesus alone offers. And the Bible closes its last 
words challenging the church to cry out, come to a hurting, thirsty world. That isn't a cruise ship church. That's a battleship church. That's a rescue mission. So we say come to a thirsty world. That's our mission. We do it with love. We do it with humility. We do it through our callings at work and at school. We do it in our homes where we simply try to welcome people as best we can to experience the goodness of God in Jesus Christ. Now, if you're watching today and you're like, I don't, I don't feel like I've experienced that goodness for myself, then get on the ship. Let someone pour into you. Put roots down in a group. Put roots down in a church. Don't just float around. Don't just sit in a lawn chair waiting for it to get worked out. Dig in. Put roots down because the gospel is for you first. If you want to share it, you got to experience it. But don't wait there. Don't stop there. Keep pushing because the more you learn about Jesus, the, the, the more your heart rests on him as your hope, you, the more you're going to discover that you are a part of the bride whose call in this world is to invite thirsty people to the source of the water of life. Now, this fall I challenge you because I want you to know that you are accepted fully as you are in Jesus, but I also challenge you, as Jesus does to all of us, to make sure that you are daily receiving the gospel for yourself and daily asking God, what do I do with this? You've given me more water than I can drink. Clearly, for a reason, I am meant to share it, right? And so, who are you calling me to invite? Who are you inviting me to, inviting me to, to say come to, get, ask for coffee, offer to support somehow, build a deeper relationship so that spiritual conversation could occur? And what's my role on your battleship? The ship that spreads love and peace in Jesus everywhere it goes. Some deep questions this week. But I don't want to start the year on a cruise ship, folks. I want to start the year on a battleship heading in the right direction towards the destination that God has planned when our work is finished, when everyone, everything, everywhere is holy. In the meantime, let's roll up our sleeves, let's open our hearts, and let's get busy. God bless you guys. Can't wait for an exciting year. We'll talk soon. So anyway, she says this, <clears throat> Michelle, our friendship started when you came to work at the care center that I also worked at here in Bismarck. We had something very much in common and that was Jesus. So often we would find one another and say, come on friend, let's go. We need to pray. For one reason or another, we, we would pray. So you and I would go to the fellowship hall and pray and then get back on the floor and go to work. I never realized at that time I was being blessed to receive such a great friendship as I have with you. You are a true friend, very caring and encourager and just plain fun to be around. Our friendship continued as I left the care center and moved to a different town. I love that you and I, along with our friend we worked with, would make sure to get together once a month and enjoy catching up, fellowshipping, and just spending time together. It meant a lot to me. When I moved back to my hometown and struggled finding a church that I was looking for, you knew my struggle. When I found out that you had started attending Surprise Church, I was a little surprised, no pun intended. <laughs> I was a little curious why you started attending Surprise Church, but I don't think I asked you why. I, I would just watch and listen to you and what was happening in your life after attending Surprise. You would be excited for church, committed to going to church. You jumped right into being a part of Surprise Church, volunteering and doing things with and for the church. During this time, I was really looking for fellowship amongst believers. I knew God was calling me to attend church instead of just watching online. You knew that I was going through and, and struggling with that. You invited me along with another friend to come to church one weekend with you, so we went. <clears throat> and in the following weeks, 
I was getting text messages from Surprise Church just checking on me, saying, is there anything we could pray for? Thank you for visiting, have a great week. I was so impressed with the friendliness, the care, the compassion shown to me, and serious plug for the worship team, you guys are truly amazing and I truly feel the Holy Spirit present. So anyway, I mentioned that you said that if I were to come back to Bismarck, which I just knew God was going to bring me back someday, I wanted to attend Surprise Church with you. So you have welcomed me with open arms. I'm finding some things that I have been looking for in a church here at Surprise Church. I was so, just so impressed with the care and the compassion and the friendliness that was shown to me. And I knew that was a church that I wanted to seek out. Here at Surprise, I feel welcome. And that means a lot to me. So thank you, Michelle, first of all, for coming in my life and becoming my friend who I consider my best friend and for inviting me to visit Surprise Church with you. I am excited to see all that God has in store for us all. So I'm gonna turn this around. That's what Annie says. Wow. Do, Annie, what do you think of all that Wow, stuff? wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I, I knew that she would love Surprise Church and I knew that eventually she'd move back to Bismarck and I kept inviting her. She didn't always, she couldn't always come, but um, whenever she did come, I knew that she did feel very welcome because she told me. And now she's all in, and um, it makes me just so happy just by texting someone and inviting them or giving them a call or saying you'll meet them at the door or come and sit with me at the front row. I will be there. Um, makes a huge difference and then God can just do the rest. It's worth the asking and you never know what's going to happen. And if I wouldn't have asked her, she wouldn't be a surprise and she's all in. Yeah, yeah she's all in. Sing a new song Shout it out louder than before Let the whole earth sing The whole earth sing There is a place We can seek His face Changed in His presence Touched by His Shout it. 